I want to discuss a few basic Buddhist principles along with some neuroscience, and I want to apply them in such a way that it will help us deal with the anxiety that so many of us are dealing with right now. So keep in mind that the Buddha was in many ways the world's first cognitive psychologist. And nothing he had even uh, discussed was even written down until 500 years after his death. So if it was going to survive, it had to maintain a certain simplicity. So I won't even talk about the Four Noble Truths. Let's just deal with the first two. And you probably have heard these. The first is usually all life is suffering. And I don't like that particular way of translating it because it's not as relatable to a lot of people these days. I like another translation that goes something like, much of life is unsatisfactory. And you could probably feel that right now. There's just something about being kind of trapped indoors and being forced to do so for long periods of time that along with that comes a certain unsatisfactoriness. So the second idea is the source of this unsatisfactoriness, and that's desire. Okay, so what's desire? Well, desire is wanting what you don't have and not wanting what you do have. And that's the moment, that's what we're dealing with right now. So think about the mind and how it dealt with 2019. There's a funny meme floating around and it goes something like, we really need to apologize to 2019 because it turns out it wasn't as bad as we thought. This is exactly how the mind works. The past is never as bad as we thought it was and the future is never as good as we think it'll be. Because the mind, through this process of desire, is just continuously craving something different. That restlessness and sometimes the monkey mind they refer to it as. And of course this is just part of our biological programming that helped our ancestors survive. So, okay, well, if desire is the problem, let's do a real simple exercise, okay? Turn it off. So just click the button and turn off desire. If you do this, everything else should follow and you should be satisfied right now. Well, maybe you've had some luck. Most of us actually have a real problem with this because there's not some clear button to turn off desire. In fact, uh, the best that we can do it all does get us deeper because then we desire not to desire. So much of neuroscience right now is trying to convince the world that you are your brain. And this is why people take different drugs because they want to alter brain chemistry because if they alter brain chemistry, they alter who they are and they change their experience. Well, one of the things neuroscience can really you be used as an excellent pointer is not to actually show us who, who we actually are, but more to show us who we actually are not. And so what brain does and what neuroscience has been excellent at is showing us how the mind functions and the mind creates desire. So first there's brain and then there's mind and then desire is just one of these subroutines. But that's the problem. See, what if we're not our brain? Identification is the same thing that happens when we identify with a car or a house. We just take possession of it. And so when you identify with your brain, you can do this. and You can claim that your brain as yours and buy into it, that you are a brain. But then that's when you buy all the programming. So one of the ways that we can break this chain of going from being unsatisfied and then kind of pulling the plug on desire is by realizing the possibility that you are not your brain, which is to say you are the awareness that's experiencing this particular brain at this time in the same way that you get into a car and drive it for a little while. You, are, you It's like a temporary thing, but you're not completely caught up in the identification process. So on a practical level, what does that mean? So right now you might be experiencing all kinds of emotions. Maybe you've broken down, maybe you've cried, maybe you've, you know, kick the wall, maybe you've lost it a few times. Well, the real struggle in all that is trying to control it because you feel like you are a brain and the brain's trying to get its act together. Well, how does the brain get its act together if you are not your brain? Well, when you take this different approach, like I have a brain, I'm not it. I just have this kind of temporary ownership in exactly the same way I'm leasing a car for a little bit it gives you a different relationship. And so you're not so attached to it and, and you're not trying to control it. So maybe you can just let those emotions flow. So the suggestion is, is if 
well, there are no wrong feelings. So if the brain melts down, let the brain melt down. And you know, if the brain is having a horrible mood, if the brain is anxious, let the brain do its thing. It's not who you are. And so maybe that's the core of unplugging desire and, un and just, just letting the emotions happen because they're not you. Because if they were you, you should have control over them. So something to ponder.